First impressions are the biggest determining factor on whether or not a relationship will be successful. And since we never get the chance to make a second first impression, it's critical that we nail the first one the first time. So if you want to learn how you can over deliver and leave an incredible first impression with new co coaching clients that enter your program, then buckle up, grab your notebook, because today's video is going to be a banger. And if you don't already know me, my name is Jeremy Pogue. I help online coaches scale with ads and setters and the rest of what they need. I've helped uh, hundreds of coaches sell literally tens of millions of dollars online. And I scaled my own coaching business from zero to over 200K a month in my first eight months using the same funnel that I teach my clients. Now let's get into it. So there's three things that we want to avoid when it comes to onboarding. And that's what this video is going to be about. How do we take a client from the second they pay you money on the sales call to getting them into the program and setting them up for success straight out the gate. So I'm going to lay out all of the steps that we do and that we teach our clients to as well. But before we do that, there's three things we want to avoid. And then I'll show you how we avoid those things throughout those steps too. So the first thing we want to avoid is overwhelm. Right? We don't want our, our clients to feel overwhelmed with too much stuff that they have to do to get onboarded. We want to make the onboarding process really streamlined, simple, fast, easy to do. So that way we just get them in and we get them quick wins straight out the gate. Right, Because if we give them a whole bunch of different things that they have to do and everything's kind of scattered all over the place and they have to fill out this form and then they have to do this thing and this thing and this thing, it's going to seem like a lot. And they might feel overwhelmed, which might actually keep them stuck because they might not do it in the first place. So we want to make sure that we eliminate what we don't absolutely need in order to help them get to where they want to go. And then from there, see if we can like streamline the rest of it and just make it a really smooth process overall. Now, another thing that is like the second thing that we want to avoid is buyer's remorse. Now, this basically means that a client they pay, like, they pay you money and then they regret their purchasing decision. Obviously, we don't want to avoid that because then that leads to refunds, chargebacks, and all the rest of it. And that is just a nightmare and nobody wants to deal with that, right? So we want to avoid buyer's remorse. And I'll show you exactly how we do that as well. Um, and it really starts with the onboarding process. And of course, the sales process is important too, right? If you're like hard selling like crazy and somebody feels really pressured, then all, all of a sudden they might get buyer's remorse like right after the call and stuff like that. And we, we don't, we don't want to do that. Um, but today we're going to focus on the onboarding call itself. And then finally, the third killer of a smooth onboarding process. The third thing we want to avoid is confusion. Confusion is the worst enemy when it comes to success, because if somebody lacks clarity and they're unsure of what they're going to, what they need to do, then they're not going to do what they need to do to get to the, where you want them to go and where they want to go as well. Right. So we want to avoid confusion and we want to, them to feel like they have extreme clarity at every step of the way. So that way they're actually making progress, which is what they paid you for and what you're there to do and, and to empower and support. And that way we avoid buyer's remorse as well. We avoid them getting stuck and we get better results a lot quicker with a lot less of your like a, a lot less of you having to play cleanup afterwards, which we don't want, right? So those are the three things we want to avoid. Um, overwhelm, buyer's remorse, and confusion. And I'll show you how we tackle each one of those three things in the steps. So now let's lay it out, right? So obviously when you onboard a client, the first thing that you need to do is collect payment, right? Now, sometimes we collect payment over Zoom calls. Sometimes we collect payment over the DMs, right? And on Instagram, some people just, they, they want to skip the call. They have watched enough of my content. They've seen all my YouTube interviews with successful clients. They've seen my story wins every single day on my Instagram account. And they just, they know that we're the real deal. We can actually help them and they're already bought in, right? And they understand the process and whatnot. And so they're ready to just sign up in the DMs, right? And that's a lot of fun, but it's, it makes things a little bit slightly different um, because on the call, you can do all the, the things that I'll lay out, but then I'll, I'll teach you, I'll share with you how to kind of do that in the DMs as well, because there's going to be a, a little bit missing there. So we'll start with the sales call because that's what most people do. And then the exceptions are the DM closes, which I'll get into in a minute. So basically what you want to do is obviously when you're on the call, do the discovery, run the sales call and sign them up and then you collect payment, right? Once they pay, that's where the fun begins. That's where the work begins, right? Now, obviously the work begins a lot sooner than that, but for the purpose of this video, that's where the onboarding process starts, right? So after, the, after you collect payment, 
now the prospect has paid and they're probably feeling a lot of different emotions. They're probably excited, they're probably nervous, they're probably anxious, and they probably don't really know what to expect and they're really just hoping that they made the right decision. And this is where buyer's remorse can creep in. So what we wanna do is wanna reaffirm their purchasing decision. We wanna share with them that, like for example, when somebody would pay me, I would be like, like awesome man, I just got the payment, super excited to get rocking and rolling with you. Um, give me one sec, I'll get everything organized on my side and I'll lay out the clear next steps for you and we'll get you on board in the program, give you access to the course, the community and everything else right now. And then we'll set up our onboarding calls so that way we can um, just hit the ground running, script out some ads together one-on-one -on -one for 60 minutes and then that way we can just start solving your lead problem, getting you on like and getting leads coming inbound to you literally this week. And so right then and there, Notice how I like take the lead there and I really just like, I confirm, I reaffirm that they they made a really good decision and they're in the right place. But then I also took the lead and foreshadowed and forecasted the next steps that we're gonna do, which shows them that I'm an expert and I know what the process is and I know what they need to do to get to where they want to be, right? And now what I want them to feel is a sense of like relief that they're like, oh, thank God I made the right decision, All right? That's what I want them to feel. I don't want them to be like, um, okay, the like, I don't really understand what this is. Um, there seems to be like a lot. And, and like, we want to avoid that confusion because that will just kill everything, right? So by reaffirming the purchase, that way we tackle buyer's remorse. And then I also take the lead, share with them the very clear next steps, which eliminates the confusion and the overwhelm as well, right? So then what we want to do is on the sales call, I actually give them immediate access to the whole program. Some people, they're like, hey, collect payment, Sweet, I'll send you over an email with all the stuff. Um, go through that, let us know if you have any questions. Um, I prefer to just do it on the call with them if we have time, because that way it's more of like a white glove service and we're just rolling out the red carpet for them, right? I don't want them to have to figure out where to go, what buttons to click and stuff like that. I wanna be on the call with them, sharing my screen or getting them to share their screen, telling them, showing them exactly what they need to do and helping them do it live on that call, because that just sets the tone for the relationship and really just reaffirms them that like, hey, we're here to help every step of the way. So with that said, I give them access to my course. So I, I make sure that they actually join it and they have access and they can see it and view it and they click on it. And then in the first module of my course, I have a link to join my Slack channel where I host my community. I make sure they click on that link, they sign up for Slack, they get into Slack and I get a notification that they're in my Slack channel. And then from there, I'm like, okay, we're good, right? They're in Slack, they're in, in the course, awesome. Then the next step from there is to set up a 60 minute onboarding call with myself and the calendar is in the first module in the video, um, the first video in the, the course as well, right? So then after, like below the, the Slack link, then there's a link to my calendar. So then we book that call in as well for usually it's like kind of like one to three days out. And what that does is it gives us a time frame, right? There's like, a, there's a deadline because I get, I then give them homework before that. And all the homework's laid out in the, in the first video, like right on the calendar, it's like, hey, make sure before our onboarding call, you complete this, this, and this, right? And then here's what we're gonna do on that onboarding call. We're gonna script out your ads and really just make sure your messaging, your offer, your positioning is dialed in and script out your ads in a way that attracts qualified leads with money and a lot of pain and urgency. So that way we're not attracting tire kickers through the top of our funnel. And then from there, that just gives them a very clear, like deadline and homework and action steps. So we give, we destroy confusion because it's, just crystal clear, exactly what they need to do. Start here, do this, start here, do this, and then boom, we have the call. And then right there, we're hitting the ground running and then we're going hard, right? So again, just eliminating buyer's remorse because now they're like, oh, awesome. I get a call with Jeremy straight away, sweet. And then also like we're getting their ads running literally within the first few days and scripted out by me who's helped script hundreds, literally too many ads to count at this point um, that have printed millions and millions of dollars. Um, so that way they have that, they can like kind of lean on my expertise, my experience there to ensure them that they're in the right place and that their ads will have a much higher likelihood of working straight out the gate than if they were to just do them themselves, right? Um, so once they have access to the course, they have access to the community. And again, we just use school for the course. I use Slack for my community um, because it's just a much more intimate setting. and. I, Anyways, I won't get into that right now. Um, but, uh, and then access to my calendar to book in our one-on-one our -on -one call uh, where we script out the ads and dive into whatever else they need. Um, and then from there, 
they pretty much have exactly what the next steps are, right? Go through these, go through like complete these two worksheets for our call. And then on that call, here's what we're gonna do. Here's gonna be the outcome of that call. And then the next steps after that, I actually tell them on the onboarding, like on that launch call, on the onboarding call that we scheduled out, after we, I help them script out their ads or do whatever we need to do on that call to just make it insanely valuable for them, then I, I give them more clear next steps as well, right? So then every step of the way, they know exactly what those next steps are because I'm the expert and I'm the leader telling them exactly what they need to do. That's why they paid me in the first place, right? And so you have to do that too. Um, but anyways, kind of backing up again. So towards the end of the sales call, they've got access to everything. They know the next steps. I, I wanna make sure that they understand the next steps too. Right. And I get them to repeat it back to me. So that way there's no confusion at all. And they feel like they just feel clear. They know exactly what they need to do. They're excited to get to work and there's not a ton of stuff for them to do. So they're not, they're not feeling overwhelmed. Right. And then from there, um, after that call, I welcome them into the community. So pretty much just a simple message like, um, Hey channel, uh, welcome in Jeremy to the program, to the community. He's a killer doing 10 K a month with his fitness coaching offer, right? He's been stuck here for the last three, four months. And he's really looking to get past, get like, get past that plateau that he's at and hit 30 to 50 K a month by the end of the year. Right. Really excited to work with you, man. Can't wait to get some ads running and to help you just absolutely blow up. And then like 10 of my clients, 10 to 20 of my clients just hop in, uh, reply to that thread. Hey, welcome, bro. Super excited to have you, right? You're in the right place, stuff like that, right? So it's awesome when your community dives in too. And if you want me to make a video on community stuff, uh, <laughs> let me know down below. But uh, we won't get into that right now. But anyways, so then that also kind of just like reaffirms their purchase and eliminates buyer's remorse when members of your community, when, when they're welcome into the group and then members of your community are also welcoming them in with open arms. So they're feeling like they're home, they're feeling like they have some connections. And if you wanna take it a step further, you can even create some group chats with some of your other clients that you feel like would be really good connections for this new client to make. So that way you're kind of like forcing the integration into your community and really just building that feeling of community and like they feel at home with their new purchasing decision, right? And again, that just eliminates or at least <laughs> mitigates uh, the odds of buyer's, rem buyer's remorse and just helps them feel like they made a safe, secure, good decision, right? And if you're actually good at what you do and you can deliver great results, then that's what we want, right? Um, so yeah, and then from there, um, if you have a client success manager or like a head coach or something like that, what I like to do is create a three-way group chat with myself, client success manager and client and say, hey, client, welcome in. I'd love for you to meet my CSM, Eduardo, right? He used to be an appointment setter, booking 30 calls a week before he scaled his own performance coaching offer to 30K a month. And now he's working uh, with us as a client success manager. Um, he's a weapon when it comes to appointment setting, um, sales processes, offers, ads, all the rest of it, mindset, human performance, all that, right? Um, he'll be a main point of contact alongside me in the program and it's gonna be a lot of fun working together, right? Him and I both have very complementary strengths. So some things that I'm not so great at, he excels at and vice versa. So whoever is best equipped to serve you, um, we'll, we'll dive in accordingly. And we'll keep all of our communication in this group chat so that way we're all on the same page at the same time, right? So what I don't do right now is I don't do a complete handoff to CSM so they never speak to me ever again. It's like, we just keep all of our chats in that group chat with my CSM and the client. So that way, like I have a, a really close pulse and a really direct line of communication with all my clients too. Um, Cause maybe I work too much, but I'm, I'm in Slack responding to clients all the time. Um, <laughs> I guess that's a good problem to have. Um, might hurt me at scale, but uh, that's how we run things now. You can definitely get to seven figures and above um, doing it like this too. Obviously it depends on the offer and stuff like that, but there's nuances to everything. Um, and then, yeah, so in there, at, at this point, so we're we're, at, we're done the onboarding call now, right? And then you welcome them, welcome them into the community. You introduce them to your client success manager or a coach if you have one um, with that message. That's kind of the first half of the message. And then from there, you want to introduce the CSM to the client. Be like, hey, by the way, Eduardo, this is, this is Jeremy. He's a fitness coach doing 10K a month. Here's what he's done, right? Here's how long he's been doing it for. 
blah, blah, blah. If you have a sales rep, then get your sales rep to create that conversation with you, client success manager and the client. So then there's like four of you in there. And then that way, that's really good for the sales guy, the sales rep to keep a close pulse on the people that he's selling in the program to make sure that they're actually being taken care of and seeing progress. He can check in on them, right? And then towards the end of the thing, if, if um, he's responsible for um, like upsells, renewals and stuff like that, then he can kind of like chime in there and maintain that relationship as well, right? So that's a really important thing. That's kind of higher level in, in advance there. Uh, if you have more of a team like I do and a lot of my clients do, but uh, if you don't, then that's totally fine, right? And then from there, lay out the next steps again through text in that group chat. Be like, Bye. and just a reminder, we've got our call set for this date, right? Two days out or whatever at this time. Before then, please make sure you, you complete this worksheet and this one and then bring that to me on the call and then here's what we're gonna do on that call. If there's any questions you have, please don't hesitate to reach out. We prefer over communication than under communication. And if at any point you feel stuck, unclear of anything, there's no such thing as a stupid question, please reach out, we're here to help, right? Really excited to work with you, can't wait to scale this thing. And then boom. So that way, like we're just really creating that environment for support and really just showing them that we actually do care about them they were here to do whatever it takes to get them to where they want to go, right? And that's really what they they value. And as a client, you like think about like when you join a program, like you want to feel like you you are actually cared for, right? You actually want to feel that they actually care about you and that they're here to support you and that they're on your team, right? Rather than just like taking your money and like abandoning you, right? And I'm sure we've all been there. Every single one of my clients has gone through other shitty programs before before joining mine, and, uh, and I've gone through lots too. Of, uh, I mean, just this past month, I've invested just shy of seventy thousand uh, dollars in like programs and mentorships and masterminds and stuff like that. Um, so we've we've all been there, right? And we want to eliminate the feeling of buyer's remorse, confusion, overwhelm, and all of the other negative emotions associated with it. And all of that starts with the onboarding process, right? And then, of course, throughout the relationship, you want to check in with them on a consistent cadence so that way you make sure that they are continuing to feel really good about it they're making progress they're seeing some success seeing some wins and whatnot and then obviously on the onboarding call what you want to do is you want to optimize for quick wins and you want to shorten the time to value so you want to make sure that they get the value that they paid for as soon as physically possible right so that's why i help most of my clients script out the ads on our onboarding call is because most of my clients come to me with like a lead problem they have not enough leads or not enough qualified leads, right? And so they come to me to help them fix that. That's kind of the most pressing problem most of the time. Sometimes we don't even touch ads. If they have ads going and they have other problems like team stuff or setter, or closer, or like program stuff, we just dive into that instead. Um, but like 90% of my clients come with a lead problem. And so that's why I've kind of optimized the program that way, right? Um, but anyways, so on that call, like, if they come to me with a lead problem, I want to solve their lead problem as soon as possible. So I, I want to help them script other ads and get those ads launched and like literally like rocking and rolling straight away, like as soon as possible. So a lot of my clients at like 30, uh, uh, like 72 hours after paying me, their ads are like live and launched and like already bringing in leads that are qualified. And they're like, oh my gosh, this is insane, right? So that's kind of what you want to aim for. You want to kind of ask yourself, how can I optimize for quick wins to reduce the time to value? Because that's going to also mitigate and minimize the, the chance of buyer's remorse and confusion and overwhelm and regret, right? Because we don't want to, we want, we want to stay out of there. So um, that's the onboarding process at a very high level view. We obviously went into the weeds a little bit too, which is awesome. And if you have any questions about how to build an incredible onboarding experience for your clients, then leave them below the video here. If you want my help, because a lot of the times what we help our clients with is like we, we solve their front end problem, but then we create back end problems. And we want to make sure that we dial everything in because they're signing a ton of clients. And if you don't have it systemized, then a lot of things break and they have to turn off your ads because you're getting too many clients and it just creates a lot of problems. So if you do want my help to get our hands dirty and roll up our sleeves and build a really good front end process, back end process, and just a full blown systemized business, then book in a call down below using the link in the description. I'd love to chat with you, see if we can help you out. 
Um, I don't take my sales calls anymore. Should probably be speaking with uh, one of my team members and he's incredible. Um, but uh, nonetheless, would love to see if we can help you out and work with you to scale up. Um, if you want to learn more about the program itself, you can check out the main video pinned to my YouTube channel and all of my client success stories in a playlist as well on here um, to see who we help, how we can help you, and hear from other clients who've gone through the process and hear about their experience too. So um, with all that said, appreciate your support, appreciate you watching the video. Hope you got a ton of value from this one. And again, book in that call down below if you're ready to take your business and your life to the next level. And I'd love to be a part of your journey. So with that said, I'm out. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.